Okay, it's time to do a little video on Chiron Last or Chiron the Last or whatever his name is. The paradox must be resolved, and to do this means turning selfishness into selflessness, from taking to giving. Hubris keeps one at a deep distance from those who are considered lesser in this world. The rare exceptions aside, that which is called the self prefers to do its giving to those who are of the same class level as one finds themselves at. The rich help the rich, the middle class assist the middle class, and the poor are only able to help the poor if it's at all possible. Cleverness will want to point out the few exceptions to this but this still remains the rule. It's all very hierarchical, and there is no heart in it. No heart in it. Okay, okay. Future, whereby humanity is stripping the earth bare and turning it into a desert, in the time to come, there will be only deserts of the heart. Everyone scrambling for the last scraps, and doing the worst to one another to attain them. Just deserts, just deserts. Oh dear, that sounds like a lot of doom and gloom there in this cult of personality. The heart would be last. It would not only give that last sip of water to their fallen brother or sister, it would also do everything it could to carry them out of that hell. With seemingly no energy and nothing left to give, the heart still finds a way. It still finds something within. It finds the spirit. The I thought the heart was an organ. The heart can do all that. What happens to the heart when the body dies? The heart rots. Just like the brain does, just like the liver, just like your intestines, just like your kidneys, just like your entire body. It's just meat. See what I'm saying? Isn't it? Isn't it an organ? This is the correct path to walk. Oh, okay. This is a, you have the correct path to walk. Wow, okay. That doesn't sound like a cult of personality at all, does it? Chiron, last, has the correct path to watch, or to walk, sorry. Okay, let's see what else he's saying in the 88 Keys video. The symbol has been obvious, but very few have paid attention. The most obvious form of it is seen on a digital clock that is displaying no time and a flashing of 8888. The indication of no time simultaneously meaning that one has run out of time. The very beginning of this reality is meeting the very end of it. The top of the hour has reached the bottom, and so on and so forth. This is essentially where we are at now. There is very little time left. The paradox. Wow, there's very little time left. That doesn't sound like a cult at all. And doom and gloom and end of the world prophecy, end of the world cult. Wow, dude. Okay, we just watched some Chiron speaking in the 88 keys. Then he makes another video saying only one key. Wow, that's deep, dude. That's deep. Does it conflict? Does it contradict? Time is the mind that we are all burdened with, which is the false crown that has brought each of us into its dark circus of hell. Those who perceive that this reality is just us having an experience are more wrong than can ever be imagined. Death is not something that is to be celebrated. How many false gurus and philosophical sages espouse that everything is taken care of? One doesn't have to be concerned in the slightest about death. 
Don't change anything. Don't question the efficacy of this entire place. Just live your life in the exact way that you personally desire, concentrating only on self-reflections and personal gains. Again, this is the very basis of the satanic doctrine. Do what thou wilt. Hearing this enrages the individual that has taken sanctuary as a slave within their self-importance. In knowing at a deep level the incredible difficulty of changing the ever-recurring situation, one continues the charade in the hope that it numbs the pain and blockades the truth, even temporarily. It is... I agree with a lot of that, but he's also doing some mind reading there of people trying to basically guess at their motivations and what's in their mind and unless he was even if he was going through that himself before making this video it doesn't mean that that's the same for everyone else that's thinking that way or living that way so i think that's a bit of guru talk on his part let's see what else chiron last has to say the heart if they are still tethered to their material possessions. One must actually render unto Caesar all that is Caesar's. One must be ready to walk away from it all. The bet must be total. All in. There are a lot of keys on one's keychain that can keep one possessed. Only one key is going to grant access to the truth that would set one free from this place. The key contained within the Mon Key suit. This is the final act, the last part of this play where we are all actors on the world stage. The last part is the narrative where the strands of a plot are put together and everything is explained, which is I'm I'm kind of guessing here because I don't understand some of what he's talking about, but uh, he mentions Revelation. I think he is a believer in the Bible. I think what he's doing is making the Bible sort of new agey. Um, he's making Christianity sort of new agey and a bit, uh, I don't know if I'd say Buddhist or ancient Egyptian, but it's like a mixture. He's like mixing things together, which... Uh, cult leaders sometimes do and gurus sometimes do they take what exists in other cults and religions and they kind of mix it up mix, like uh mix it together in, in a mixing bowl and make a recipe of their own and they put they make their own flavor in a way of things that already exist teachings that already exist beliefs that already exist religions or cults that already exist and that's what i think he's doing i think he's taking bits and pieces from here and from there like a magpie in a way. The magpie guru. Let's call him that for, for now. Which is why this is the time for the total revelation. The end of the revolution of the age means it is simultaneously time for the revelation of what this place is all about. The revelation at the end of the revolution. It is also the last call for the spirits of this party that is turning the whole world into a total nuthouse. And just as everyone is an actor in the plot of this graveyard, to walk the path of the heart in this most narrow opportunity, one must be ready to hang up their costume for the last time. What was the point of creating all this and having us go through all this in the first place? It's a nuthouse, the world stage, we're just walking dead, all this kind of stuff. What was the point of all of this? What was the point of putting us through this? And he still seems to worship these beings as, quote, authorities that put us through all of this. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see where he goes off track completely? It's easy to spot. Those who believe that there is no need to walk the walk have been caught in a fallacy. We do not just get to tomb a ride home. To get out of hell, one must walk through hell. The how, the when, and the where 
is the final revelation that is going to be shown. But one must believe in this vision, for it is also a walk of complete faith. There are two types of preparation, the external prepping or the internal. Which one are you going to walk? Another right, moving forward, what else does he have to say? More stuff about the heart? Foundation. Without the heart, it can do nothing. Once a piece is separated from the truth, it begins to rot and decay. And this false deity's false science props this part of its system up as a second. Sounds like more guru talk to me personally. Anything else we can pick through here? Entropy is just a devious synonym for division. Die vision is exactly that. The vision of death. We are under its rule, the ruler being the square, and the compass quarters and encompasses us into its time trap. To complete what was first stated in the work A Divine Comedy, the true meaning of the G is only to be found in a single clue given in the musical solfege, whereby starting from the tonic of C, the fifth note... Now how many interpretations there are of the Masonic G? inside of the compass and square it's hundreds hundreds does he know for sure the true meaning of it no i don't believe he does even if he did so what no truly so what that really isn't the key to getting out of this place so much of his teachings just seem like typical guru talk mixed in with a little bit of word magic and you know breaking the words apart like division and stuff like that for division it's it's pretty simple stuff to newbies it might come across as high level or high magic or something but really it isn't it's not that difficult it's not that high level Does he have more to say? What else does he have to say here? Which so many cherish and cling on to because of physical sensation and pleasure, heralded as the great creation of the Grand Architect. This is why every day when the sun that everyone is familiar with rises in the sky, we are trained to say good morning, which is really God morning. Our true eternal mother and father telling us that they are mourning their dead sons and daughters. Our true eternal mother and father. There you go. He wants you to worship these, quote, higher beings of authority. You know, it's, it's just incredible. But it's, le it's leading people down the wrong path. Do you see what I'm saying? If you don't see what I'm saying, you're in a hell realm. If you had a caring, all-powerful mother and father, they wouldn't just abandon you here and watch millions, if not billions, suffer here. They wouldn't have created a hell realm like this. And they wouldn't just leave you here and do nothing about it. They're mourning, they're really up there mourning, <laughs> mourning the loss of their uh, sons and daughters, right? Seriously? Are you freaking serious? How many tens of thousands are following this? It's another, quote, truth or trap. It's like he gets some things right, but then he really totally leads you astray. If you're going to obey, quote, spiritual authorities, and they're not really authorities over you, in the afterlife when you die, you're going to end up back here. You're going to end up recycled right back here again. Because it makes no sense. It makes no sense if they're caring and mourning or whatever. They, they would do something to fix this place and stop the evil. And nothing has ever been done that we can see throughout history. Through anything that we can look at. You could say history is all false. Fine. But there's still no evidence that the evil that's around now was ever stopped or ever will be here in this realm that no God has intervened to stop it. You see what I'm saying? 
doesn't add up. He's teaching you things that don't add up. So you can say, well, you hate him. No, I don't hate him. I see through, I see some really big contradictions and I see some holes in his theory and I see some things that are thrown in there that plain do not add up. And I'm going to speak plainly because he doesn't speak plainly. He does that intentionally. And it, it's like it's like somebody trying to make themselves sound smart and clever and tricky and talk in circles. So your eternal loving mother and father have done nothing to help you or anyone else here, not just you. And they've allowed evil to take over and dominate this realm for thousands of years at a minimum if not forever here, if not since the beginning. We don't know that for sure. That's a possibility, regardless of what it says in your Bible about a Garden of Eden and this and that in Genesis. You know, that's a book. That's a book. You can observe evil today. Where's your God? Where's your eternal caring mother and father that he speaks about? Where are they? I don't think anything is coming to save you and to stop evil here. I think we have to do it ourselves. And he's not teaching that. That's for sure. See what I'm saying? I hope so. I hope you see through this for your own sake. It doesn't help me. Either way, it doesn't hurt me or help me if you join a cult or you follow along, you give your mind away to it, you stop thinking for yourself, you just start following someone like this doesn't hurt me doesn't help me you got to help yourself one out of here you got to start thinking that way and accept help from others and learn from others and start seeing through some of this stuff because it's easy for people to get wrapped up in this I would bet that you're here in the first place because you did follow and you did obey Entities, let's call them, in another realm beyond this. And that's how you got here. And that's what he's teaching you to do again. You know what I'm saying? If it failed the first time, do it again, right? Wrong. Wrong. I think he's wrong. I think he's uh, teaching people the wrong path. I think if you're looking up to, quote, spiritual authorities, you're fucked from that point forward. No matter what you do, you're dooming yourself. Because they can always just tell you in the afterlife, you're not good enough. Go back to earth and perfect yourself. Do better. You failed at this. You weren't good at this. Your heart's too heavy. Make your heart lighter. Make it lighter than a feather. We're going to weigh it on a scale. You're looking to be judged at that point. You're looking to go into the afterlife and be judged by entities. And you're going to fail. Because your whole strategy is a failure. Your whole concept of, oh, they're going to judge me. You're letting something else judge you. That's a failure from the start. Anyway, that's my thoughts on Chiron last or Chiron the last or Chiron or whatever you want to call him. Um, I do think he's a burgeoning cult of personality. I'm almost surprised that he doesn't have 150 or 250,000 subscribers or more yet. There's a lot of gullible people in this quote community. There's a lot of people that want to follow. There's a lot of people that want to be led. They want a guru. They want a cult leader. They want to belong in a cult. They want to stop thinking from the, for themselves. They want simple sayings like just see with your heart and only one key. Making things simple while talking in circles, which he does a lot of. Does a lot of guru talk. A lot of people enjoy that. They like that. They're at that level. Jimmy the toothpaste eater <clears throat> is a fan of this guy, and I'm not surprised. Not a bit. You can shut off your mind and just listen to this. That's what people do when they listen to gurus. Wamis. 
the same thing. The same thing. It's just more new age, more modernized. I think he's Canadian or seems to be Canadian. It's just a modern spin on something that's been around for ages. That's all it is. Sure, because people think he sounds very clever. Videos seem very polished. That they'll follow him. So that's my thoughts on that. That's what I think is going on there. You can follow whatever channels you want. It's up to you. My word of, word of advice would be, if you're following him, I think you're going to end up back here again. I really do. I think that's where it leads. So thanks for listening. Take care, everyone. Bye.